Learn with Sri Athlet Insights. Stay tuned. Welcome to Lit Insights. Today we are going to discuss about the poem Pied Beauty, which was written by Gerard Manley Hopkins. Moving on to the poem. Glory be to God for dappled things, for skies of couple colour as a brinded cow, for rose moles all in stipple upon trout that swim, fresh fire coal chestnut falls, finches wings, landscape plotted and pieced, fold, fallow and plough, and all trades their gear and tackle and trim. All things counter, original, spare, strange. Whatever is fickle, freckled, who knows how? With swift, slow, sweet, sore, adacile, dim, he fathers forth whose beauty is past change. Praise him. Here the poem starts with a praise and ends with a praise too. The poet says that glory be to God for dappled things. Here the speaker is actually invoking a devotional poetry and he is giving a traditional kind of opening, traditional opening to Catholic prayer. He says glory be to the Father. What we are going to say this glory? The narrator says he praises God specifically for imperfect. For unique things in contrast to the traditional interpretation of dappled or spotted things are morally inferior. He says that these things are not inferior or negative. All these things which are dappled and spotted are not at all negative or inferior. Morally inferior. Rather, I praise God for all these imperfect things because all these imperfect things are unique. The couple color of sky which seems to us like a brinted cow. For rose moles falls. In the wings of finches. In the lands which are seen like plotted. Some are plotted, some are pieced. Some are fold, that means some are for fenced. Some are fallow, some are kept empty and barren. Some are plot, that means some are used for cultivation. So even the landscape itself is unique. And we need to say thank you. We need to say thanks to God for all these kind of differences that he has made. And all trades, their gear and tackle and trim. Here he says, that we need to say thank you for each and everything. Uh, we can see we can see the connotation that the language and images uh, it's very much familiar to the rural English countryside. That's why the ending is slightly uh, said as gear and tackle and trim. It's similar to the rural English countryside language. Now the poet says. All things which are counter, original, spare, strange, whatever is fickle, freckled. Here the poet is saying, whatever is fickle is freckled. That means, whatever that has a difference in spot, even in a spot, that actually indicates a change or a difference. Frickle here. Fickle here means that which changes a lot and freckle means those spots or dots which is which makes each and everything unique. Fickle, whatever is posed as a change is actually freckled. With swift, slow, sweet, so a dazzle dream. Here the poet says, Whatever be it, whether it is swift or slow, whether it is sweet or sour, whether it is bright or dim, he fathers forth whose beauty is past change. The one who created the Almighty, 
the one who created all those changes which we can see and which beyond our vision all these things which are created by god and that god who created all this beauty is past change he himself never undergoes any change but he is the one who created all the changes but he himself never undergoes any change he stands in this state of eternal unchanged so for that we need to praise him here in this poem pied beauty actually the poet is giving a glorious vocation to god he praises god for all those dappled things which he has created for all those unique things which he has made which he has bring into his existence and the creator of all these changes is beyond the eternal change he is the eternal unchanged so we need to praise him so here like almost all hopkins poems we can see two components one is in scape and the other is in stress these are complementary concepts about individuality and uniqueness uh, actually derived by hopkins um we can trace this ideas back to the philosopher dun scotus in his doctrine of university of being so in in scape and in stress now what is in stress in stress is either the force of being which holds the in scape together or the impulse from the in scape which carries it all into the mind of the beholder an in scape is nothing else but the unified complexity of characteristics that give each thing its uniqueness that it differentiates it from the other things in simple words what is mean by in scape and in stress in scape is nothing but the unique characteristics of each and everything that makes each thing different from the other thing the uniqueness of each and individual thing is in scape now what is in stress the force that binds all these things together that is in stress so in scape can be called as all those things which we can see here and in stress may be the power of god the, the creator actually who has the control of all these things so we can see these elements of inscape and instress in hopkins poetry the poem to conclude is actually portrays the poet's love towards god and the poet says in this world whatever is unique is actually made by god and for that we need to thank him we need to praise him because whatever is fickle is freckled all things counter original spare strange whatever is fickle freckled and this is made by god and for that and he is beauty past change his beauty and he is the one that stands for eternal unchanged so for that we need to praise him thank you